Welcome back to the Bar Blue Podcast, everybody. It has been a long time. Paul Piaz, a friend of the uh, podcast, has joined with it there. Paul, how are you, my man? I'm good, I'm good. Very, very good. Good, good. How's the weather treating you? Shit. Ah, uh, it's ruthless it's over bad. here. It's bad, yeah, it's bad. Uh, it's like Bambi on ice. I think at least 45 people have broke wrists, hips, the lot. Do you know what I mean? It's not good, but things have been going good I've for yourself. Not, I'm not, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not falling over for anybody. <laughs> I nearly, I nearly showed some dance moves the other, the other night. I, I was nearly down, honestly. Was I was always, I was nearly down, honestly. I, I was, it was like, do you know one of them break dancers? <laughs> honestly, I, I was body shifting and everything. I wasn't going down like, even no. save me shopping. <laughs> uh, anyway, Paul, things have been going great for you, haven't they? They have been, yeah. They have, uh, they, it, it shows that I, I know there's not a lot of people know, but when I moved to Orkney, there's not there's not a lot I can do here. I mean, I've got a lot of experience, and you know, I've been around the world, and I've done this and I've done that, so I'm able to save myself, but. When it comes to that, them last couple of fights, it just shows that spending time with with the boxers again, spending time with Lee McAllister, putting well, proper uh, camps. We'll if, just if, touch on Lee. We'll just touch on Lee because you self admittedly say that being with Lee for that prolonged period really improved your boxing, improved your mindset. Now, would you say beforehand you lacked a bit of the mindset and a bit of the when there's just that little bit in the tank? You're just relaxing rather than pushing it. Yeah, that, that that's one of the main things that Lee has actually taught me or brought into my uh, armory, should we say. Yeah. Because yeah, everyone knows I love a fight. Everyone knows that I can fight. Everyone knows I can box. But when it comes to these longer distance fights, these eight rounds, 10 rounds, especially 12 rounds, you've got to be able to relax. You've got to be able to you know, reserve your energy, reserve your tank. And I think over them last couple of months, Lee has really showed me what I can do. I mean, I never got to do it for that many rounds in them two, them two you know, the 12-round fight for the WBU because I took them out in the third round. That's a testament, but, though, to what you're what applying. Oh, a million percent. So it was um, it clearly shown. I mean, I could have I easily done 12 rounds with him, easily. And I, there was no effort in the shot. When I boxed that Samuel Lockrog, there was no effort in it. And that's another thing I've clearly shown. I can knock people out. I don't say not meaning it, because mm-hmm. the shot was... But, uh, would you see it coming on the back foot, you can knock people out? I would like to think so. I would like to. That was on the back foot. That's, that's what I'm that. saying. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Do you think you've applied that? Do you think the back foot boxing, you can still rather than apply the pressure and knock them out? Do you think you can do that on the back foot more yeah. often? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's an, like you were saying, that's a different element, a different fraction to your game. Well, that fight, that fight was fucking Czech Republic. I was on my back foot there. Mm-hmm. And he walked straight on to a lovely right over her night. It was a beautiful. Oh, it was a lovely. Yeah, uh, me and Matty were what did drool over that. Like it was a very, very, very clash. It just and do you know what? The, do you know the combo you sent me as well? Like that looked effortless as well. Like yeah, that uh, just looked like uh, reactionary. Yeah, it's just flowing. Mm-hmm. I have really relaxed. Yeah, you've you've even said you've. Uh, struggle to get sparring and opening, and you've sometimes you've you've got to move away. How how detrimental have you? De- not detrimental. I'll say, have you learned to cope being away from the family? Because when you when you're stepping it up a notch in training, and you've got the team around you, that has to be sacrifices made. Obviously, you've been away from your family for how long was it the last time? Three months. Three months. Yeah. Right, that's a long time. Have you adapted to that yet? I mean, it's never going to be as easy. It's never, it's never going to get easier. It's not, you know, your family's your family. You kid, you only, your kids only grow up once, don't they? Mm-hmm. 
that was a big thing for me to do there because the baby was only a couple of months old, what, two months, three months old, and I moved away for three months, so I've just wasted three, well, I say wasted, but I've just lost three months there. Baby's nine months old now. So something always, something's always got to give when it comes to the boxing, whether it's your... Whether it's your uh, whether it's your nutrition, whether it's your, your fitness, whether it's the sparring, moving away. There's something to always got to give, if not all of them. Are you and Lee doing this scientifically? In what are, way? Are, it, training-wise, are you, are you hitting numbers? Are you targeting numbers and rounds and hitting the bag, punches through and stuff like that? Uh, not really. Uh, that that was my first proper camp with Lee, so I think Lee had a couple of things he wanted to add. So mm-hmm. I think we concentrated on that. Um, I always put it under ten percent into the training, so it wasn't something Lee really had to concentrate on. So it was more the relaxing, it was more the footwork. You know, there was a few things I'd done because I'd saved myself for years being mm-hmm. being here. I was stepping back with my hands down. You know, the defence wasn't as good. Loads of little things that we just wanted to add, but Lee never, ever told me what he was doing. Right. It was sometimes, it was just relaxing. Because all mm. he kept saying, relax, but I knew there was more. There was more to what he was doing. He just didn't want to tell me because he didn't want me to think about it. He's That's... very good at what he does. He's very, very good at what he does. Uh, he, he, uh, the performances speak for itself, Paul. You know what I mean? I really do. Yeah. Obviously... You, I'm gonna go into something deeper now, and like obviously because I'm gonna let people know we're doing this in two halves. Uh, Paul's got some commitments. I've got some commitments. We'll get the second half done uh, as soon as we can. But the main target, the man who Paul wants and wants to rectify his loss to, because we all know it. Paul wasn't himself in the first fight. As Scott Harrison. Now, when I say the name, Paul smiles. I see, like, the hair stand up on his on his hairless head. The edges stand up. He gets excited. He gets all giddy. He starts shadow boxing. I was starts, <laughs> starts slipping, rolling. Right. <laughs> so, Paul, do you think this will come to fruition? I don't know. Uh, I think it, it will, you know. I think I, it will in time. I, I really, really want it to happen. Uh, it's all on Scott. I mean, when I won that WB World title, Scott was quick enough <laughs> to put posts up about me, to, to call me out again, to, you know, even just have my name put on his Twitter mm-hmm. was enough for me, to, for me to get excited. I mean, even though that world, that world title was at Welter, I'm happy, more than happy, to go and see if there's another world title, whether it's another WBU or another WBF. Sitting at super lightweight, I'll make super lightweight. Mm-hmm. It was just like light, lightweight killed me, especially with with not doing a proper camp. Yeah, you know, behind closed doors, I couldn't get off the island. Again, I know I'm repeating myself, but I was doing, I, I was running, I was doing shadow work, and I was doing bag work. That was it. Mm-hmm. Couldn't do anything. So going back off me doing a proper camp and people noticing the difference. Would I like it to happen? Doing another proper camp? Yeah. Do I want it to happen? Yeah. <laughs> it's on Scott. I don't know. There's a show that I'm planning on helping. Uh, there's a, a fella called Andy Bell who I'm helping do a show and it's in Scott's area and I have sent him a message, multiple messages and he's still not got back yet. I know it's, you know, I know it's a long time away. July, it's seven months away, but you know, it's perfect time. For, it's something for them to sink his teeth into, do you know? Yeah. Hundred percent. Seven months is a perfect time if he's got nothing on. Exactly. That, the, exactly. The character that he is and the, the mindset that he's got, he'll have something to focus on, like you say. Obviously, you winning the WBU title is like that's a huge plus as well, but I think like, like I say, that's an amazing achievement achievement. But this fight is, I said to you on the phone, this fight is more than a belt. I think yeah. this is more for pride and, like, 
on the night of the fight, you just were not yourself. And with a full camp behind you and Lee, full structured one, I think it's going to be a whole lot different because, like I say, you're doing stuff more naturally, more instinctively, and it just yeah. flow now. Whether it, whether it didn't flow the last time, like it, it you have totally changed, which is it's good. But I'm gonna say it's weird in a good way. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Just yeah. how but how it, quick it's done. It's as well. You know, I've been a pro what six years now. I've, ne- I've never boxed a lightweight before. Mm-hmm. I never boxed a lightweight for years before the term professional. It was always around super lightweight or even touching well. So I've always been this size. Yeah. So to go from eleven and a half stone, eleven stone down to you know nine stone nine. Especially behind closed doors, mentally I wasn't ready. I think physically, you know, I, I was more ready physically than I was mentally. Mm-hmm. What do you put that down to? Has that switched now? Has that gone? What, I'm I'm good, that... Hey, look, I'm in a good place now. There's no more COVID. I'm not. I'm not stressed. There's mm-hmm. no more. I, I. No more Charles Russo, I should we say? I was one of them conspiracy theorists that you know I I got sucked into that sucked into that COVID I, I don't bother you know I'm not oh, the world's opened up now you're able to do things and you know I'm back to normal I've got I've got another baby so I can't you know I can't afford to be getting all depressed I couldn't box really there was no boxing mm-hmm. I was down because there was no boxing I had no focus I've got me focus now and if Scott wants to give me that fight and give me more focus I'll be happy to do that again Let's let's look on the doom and gloom here. What happens if that fight doesn't happen? I'm still a world champion. So you're literally not because this is like the switch is now you've got the target on your back. I can't make I can't I can't make him fight me. But as he keeps saying, who else is going to? I I will fight him. I'll fight him again. Mm -hmm. There's not many fighters on the Bieber. That will give him a fight again. That I'll fight give him with a proper camp. There's not many fighters. Yeah. So honestly, he wants to fight, gonna have to take me up on the offer. I think honestly, I said yeah, on, the, on the phone. I think the fight happens. I really do. Um, I, I, it, it gives him a focus. You've already got yours. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm just I'm keen to see the the intensity. The and the focus, if the fight does happen in your training, you're not down for it because <laughs> that, that's a different level. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's so different from the last fight. I mean, I, I think about doing a proper camp for them, you know, even a crowd, a crowd, uh-huh. well, yeah, and closed doors was it was weird, but you know. A lot of people don't take that into fact that you know, Paul. Like they just think, oh, you should you should just perform. Do you know what I mean? Like there's no crowd, but you've got to perform. Yeah. No, it was do you know what it wasn't it wasn't the behind closed doors. It was for my first fight, it was the lightweight. Then it was COVID. Then it was, you know, I was training on my own. I was doing everything. There was a lot. And then I was boxing Scott Harrison. You know, it wasn't a, just a fight behind closed uh-huh. doors, it was the man himself who I used to watch when I was younger. Yeah. This, this animal, you know, and then I had people telling me, "Oh, don't let him hit you too hard," and you know, try and stay away from his power. There was everything growing so, inside. Did you consume too much? And did you? I, you I, that, that sounds to me you consumed yourself so much in, in, yeah. into what he what he was back then. One million percent. Yes, and I did. you fought like because a lot of people. I say this: don't watch all fights. Watch yeah. at least if they've got six months of a year, if they've got fights between that, watch that. Yeah. A lot of people thought, oh, you should say him, he's an animal. No, he hasn't boxed for seven years. Do you know what I mean? Well, I but- was watching. I I kept watching. When I got matched up with him, I kept watching his last fight under the board, and it was Liam Walsh. And I kept thinking, oh, I was bad with Liam. Mm-hmm. I've been, Liam, I've done three camps with Liam over in Tenerife. I'll be fine. If he can do it, I can do it. And I kept that. That was my belief. Mm-hmm. But then I was watching all the fights and I was like, fucking hell, what if I can't? Like, what? <laughs> but this 
what we do as fighters. We go. Yeah, for it's a hundred percent true. Yeah, but that, but I think, I think it was more. I did, I did build them up. I kept saying that it was a good, it's a good thing though. I know you're saying watching his fights back then. I mean, watching his fights back then, that was the Scott that I used to watch. So uh-huh. if I stay and try and build myself for that man, any yeah. less than bonus. But if I'm boxing him, I'm in the world of trouble if I don't believe myself. Oh, 100%. I get that. I get that. I a million percent get that. Because yeah. what, I, what I always would say, because I've had it happen once in the past, I tell them it they are not as quick anymore. They've yeah. lost a step. So don't worry about the speed. Do you know what I mean? If I, if I could have kept that first round up, for six rounds, the one that touched me, mate. One that touched me. No, definitely not. He could come in, everything come in then. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's still he's still good. He was a big fella. He, you know, he was huge on the night. He, mm. To me, um, yeah, I do, I do think it'd be a different story next time. I really do. I'm going to try and get Scott on, you know. I'm going to try and get us both on at the same time. Yeah, it'd be good, yeah. That'd be a good idea, that. Uh, I'm going to get his on. Tr- I'm going to try my best to get to get him on. Give him a message on Twitter. I'll give him a message on Twitter. I'll I'll send him a link to what we've done before. And then, because I'll, I'll, obviously this is the first of two. Uh, I'll, do you want us to put them up separately? It's up to you. You do what you need to do. Well, I, right. Not a worry. Um, we'll talk about that off on, on uh, off, off you. Yeah. Uh, okay. But, and now you... You push for time. I'm gonna let you go now, so you can have a, probably another quick coffee before you set off. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm not that evil. Uh, <laughs> the temperature has severely dropped, so we we'll all need hot drinks. <laughs> uh, but Paul, I'll get in touch with uh, with you. Uh, probably. Let me know if he gets back to you. I'll let you know if he gets back to you, but I'll get in touch with you later this evening about six. Okay. No worries, my man. All right. right. Everybody, that's the first half of two. Thank you very much, Paul, for your time. We'll be back for the second half. Peace out. Boom.